Hello class, today we're going to be talking about the elementary backstroke in our teaching aquatics class. As you can see in these two pictures, it is going to be swimming on the back, but very much different than the back crawl or the backstroke. So elementary backstroke, it is a resting stroke. So it can be used for survival swimming. Uh, pretty much it's for leisure, survival swimming, or uh, recreation, th uh, recreation swimming. So why is it a resting stroke? Well, it has a glide phase in it. So you will pe perform the swim stroke and then glide and then swim again. Um, and therefore it prevents exhaustion. Also, since you're on your back, your face is out of the water. So it's very easily for you to breathe. For the elementary backstroke, it incorporates an arm push with a breaststroke kick, also called a whip kick. And for this stroke, both arms and legs move simultaneous, and when they both get back to their initial starting position at the same time. In addition, arms and legs should remain in the water the whole time. So some of you may think back when you receive swim lessons and learn this stroke as Tickle T Soldier, or in this lovely picture over here where I don't believe the swimmer feels very confident. Uh, she's trying to remember Chicken Star Pencil to perform the elementary backstroke. I've also heard Monkey T Rocket, Chicken um, T Pencil, Tickle T Touch, Monkey Airplane Pencil, there's a ton of variations of the cue words that are used for children to remind them on what to do and also to get an image in their, in their mind about what their body position should look like. So when we're doing the breaststroke kick on our back, which is slightly different than when we perform the breaststroke kick for the actual breaststroke, which would be on our front or on our stomach, um, the cue words that we're going to be focusing when we're in the water is bend, out, kick, together. So that's going to say bend at your knees, out, meaning pointing your toes outwards, kick, which means like doing a soccer pass kick with the inside of your foot. That's where you're going to catch the water with your feet. And then together, your feet should come together um, as in the starting position. So knees should remain um, underwater, slightly underwater. They should not be breaking the surface of the water. You should not, when we say bend, um, be bending at the hip. You should be letting your heels come back um, behind you. So bending at the knees. The kick propulsion comes from the inside of your ankles. So it's really important to make sure that you rotate your feet outwards and then you're catching with the inside of your foot, your ankle, and also um, your calf as well. Uh, when feet are together, then your arm should be at the sides of your body. And this is your glide phase within this stroke. And if it is difficult um, for you to glide, it's probably because you are bending at your hips and not your knees and therefore your hips are dropping and that's producing more drag. So this is an example of what not to do, right? The knees coming totally outside further than the uh, toes or the feet and also the arms coming way higher than the shoulders. So what we do want to see is toes coming out wider than the knees and that as the arms are coming together the feet are whipping with the inside of them together into their start position so hands are at the side and the toes are extended and touching so what are the phases for the elementary backstroke the first active phase is you're going to bend your elbows and draw your hands up towards your armpits or shoulders um, as if to tickle yourself, hence why that is many times used. Or you could do the monkey or the chicken. Um, but you want to make sure that as you're bringing your arms up to try decrease that drag, bringing them up. So 
Um, I teach to bring them up on the size of the body. You may see some people that kind of draw them up on the top of their body, but I do believe the size of the body is a little bit better. Um, at the same time as that you are bringing your hands up to your armpits, you're going to be uh, bending your knees, not the hip, and bringing your feet towards your buttocks behind. And making sure that you're still keeping your knees together. They can kind of split apart a little bit to about shoulder width, uh, but no further than shoulder width. You should be uh, driving with your toes outward, not your knees out. So knees are just staying within shoulder width. The closer they stay together, the better. And the knees should remain in water. Uh, the head remains in neutral position throughout the entire stroke, so you shouldn't raise your head up to look down at your toes because then your hips will sink. And you also don't want to lift your chin too high. That water is coming over your face during your glide phase. So if you're teaching children how to swim, you can call this position tickle, chicken, or monkey phase to help learning be more fun. Second active phase is now you're gonna extend your arms sideways as to form the T or airplane. Um, your palms are going to be facing backwards towards your toes. It's important not to really go 90 degrees. So past your shoulders, we're not going up above the head where you'll see some swimmers do that as more of a warm up for range of motion. But for the actual backstroke, elementary backstroke, we want to just draw our arms out from our, our armpits and shoulders directly out to the sides, um, which will help produce less drags less drag, and also um, going above your shoulders may increase shoulder injury for this stroke. You're going to spread your feet apart, trying to keep your knees together, keeping your toes pointed outward. Kind of remember it like a soccer pass, so you're using the inside of that heel and foot. Um, and you can call this position eagle, airplane, or T. The third active phase and now is the propulsion phase of the swim stroke. So you're going to forcefully sweep and push and extend your arms downwards and inward so that they simultaneously push against the water and are brought back to the size of your body, uh, which is your initial position. So an elbow should stay extended through that phase. At the same time, you are extending your knees and bringing your feet downward and then squeezing them together once they're fully extended. So some people also call this a circular whip kick. So as you draw your heels up behind you, then you whip your toes outward and then you circle back around together with your feet. So this is also providing the propulsion and which brings your legs back to the initial position. Um, then really the fourth phase is the glide phase and you should be able to hold this for a second or two and actually be moving across the body uh, across the water during this phase so the third active phase you can call it pencil soldier or rocket so again recap on elementary backstroke here in this picture um, to your right, they're bringing up their arms to the sides of the body, extending them straight out at about shoulder height. Toes are rotate, rotated outward. Knees are about shoulder width apart. Toes are um, putting outward and are going to sweep and circle, whip around back together till they touch each other. At the same time, the arms are being pushed down towards the body. So some variations of super straight, really good range of motion on the top, a little bit less range of motion and even less range of motion below. But again, still working on getting those feet wider than knees um, and also arms out at about nine degrees. Here, um, they're drawing up their arms on kind of the top of their body, so the side of the body, extending outward right at the shoulders. Again, making sure toes and ankles are wider than the knees, whipping the feet around back together and pushing the arms down. And then this last picture here is that glide phase. So it is important to make sure that we focus on these pictures and not 
to be confused by others, which are not showing the accurate way to perform the elementary backstroke. For instance, this person arms are going way above the body trying to catch. Um, knees are extended further out than the toes really. So draw, drawing the knees up first before the toes. Um, this one, toes are actually rotated inward and arms are brought above, 100% above the head and sweep around. So we wanna make sure that we are focusing on the correct way and we will practice once we get back into the pool. Thank you. Elementary backstroke is used for recreational and survival swimming. Elementary backstroke uses symmetrical and simultaneous movements of the arms and legs to propel the body forward. The arms move up the sides of the body, reach out, and press toward the feet as the legs kick in a circular action. The arm stroke and the kick finish at the same time, allowing the swimmer to glide briefly in a streamlined position. Begin in the glide position with your back straight, your legs together, and your arms at your sides. Your palms face your thighs. Your hips and legs may be slightly lower than your head and shoulders, but your hips stay near the surface throughout the stroke. The water line usually covers your ears, but your face will always be out of the water. Focus on developing a rhythmic pattern of breathing. Inhale as your arms recover up your sides. Exhale during the power phase as your arms press toward your feet. Although your arms and legs move through their power phase simultaneously, your arms start their recovery just ahead of your legs. Because your legs are stronger and travel a shorter distance than your arms, both your legs and arms finish their power phase at the same time. At the end of this combined power phase, glide for a few seconds before you start recovery for the next stroke. Begin to recover your arms and legs for the next stroke before you lose all forward momentum from the glide. From the glide position, the arm stroke for elementary backstroke begins with the recovery. Keep your palms facing down or toward your body as you bend your elbows and slide your hands up along your sides to a point just below your armpits. The power phase of the arm stroke begins here. Point your fingers away from your shoulders with your palms facing toward your feet. Leading with your fingers, extend your arms out to your sides at or slightly above shoulder level. If you think of a clock face, your hand should extend no further than the 2 o'clock and 10 o'clock positions. With your arms straight or slightly bent, press your palms and the insides of your arms back toward your feet in a broad, sweeping motion. Your arms end up in the glide position with your palms against your thighs. Now watch the entire arm stroke, recovery, and power phase. Your arms move smoothly from the start of the recovery through the completion of the power phase. Be sure to keep your hands just below the surface of the water throughout the arm stroke. In the kick for elementary backstroke, both legs bend at the knee and then push out and back around in a circular pushing motion. Begin in the glide position, legs together, toes pointed. Recover your legs by bending and slightly separating your knees while you draw your heels downward to a point under and outside your knees. Be careful not to drop your hips when you drop your heels. Your hips should stay in line with your thighs and near the surface. Your knees are spread hip width or slightly wider. At the end of recovery, rotate your knees slightly inward, flex your ankles, and rotate your feet outward. Push your feet out and around, ending with your legs in the glide position, toes pointed. To get the most power from the kick, accelerate your feet throughout the circular pushing motion. Now observe the elementary backstroke in its entirety. <laughs> 